good afternoon, Lace Jump, and I'm John, this is many a true nerd to welcome to Kerbal Space Program 2, which just entered early access the other day, and uh, me and this game, we've got some unfinished business, which is uh, some years ago, you may recall, I played the original Kerbal Space Program, and uh, over the course of uh, several hours, where I spent a lot of time uh, primarily exploding, to be honest, I made it to the moon. Now, the pedants among you may point out that the way I did that was by forcing my astronaut to jump out of a spacecraft while it was travelling at full speed and then slamming straight into the moon. And today, I'm going to put that right, okay? I am going to get a Kerbal onto the moon and they're going to be alive afterwards, damn it! Just in case you're not familiar with Kerbal Space Program, as you probably should have guessed from the name, this is a game about space. And it takes, you know, a somewhat realistic view of space, which is uh, space is cocking big and also mostly empty. So we don't really need to worry about space. Let's just um, zoom in just the tiniest amount here, the tiniest amount. Here we go. I found a star. There's a star over here. And around that star, we've got a whole bunch of planets orbiting. But don't worry about them, they're a bit far away too. Let's just um, zoom in on... There we go, Kerbin. Like Earth, but not. And just around the corner, the moon. Which very conveniently is just looping round and round and round the Earth. Meaning, I'm gonna get there sooner or later. I mean, just by process of trial and error. If I keep sending spaceships out into space, sooner or later, one of them has to hit the moon. But okay. Step one, let's just check if I've got the absolute basics here. A pod. That's going to, you know, have a Kerbal sitting inside it. You need a pilot to make the ship go. Below that, one fuel tank contains fuel. One engine burns the fuel in order to, you know, go up and whatnot. Marvellous. So that should be sufficient to go up. But we could do better than that. Because I don't just want to send someone into space and then for them to explode. It's gonna happen, but I don't want to, you know, actively plan for it. Plus, I remember some stuff from the original Kerbal. So, decoupling. We want to burn the fuel, then jettison the fuel tanks. So, we burn that, and we get rid of it. Meaning, the remaining cockpit is now going to be way, way lighter. Meaning, here we go. We can then attach a parachute to the top of the thing. Ideally the top, hang on. There we go, the top. It looks better if it's on the top, damn it. So then we activate the parachute afterwards and life is going to be good. Though, oh, hang on, no. No, no, no. We need to get this right here. Parachute goes here, yes. Okay. So, step one is we launch. Then I push a button, and then in the first stage, this thing gets jettisoned, and the fuel and the engine falls off. And then, when I'm ready, I press, you know, button number two, parachute comes out, person lands, everything goes just fine. That's the theory, anyway. But as I say, this game's full of, like, you know, terrifying stats and physics. Rocket moves to launch pad, turn thrusters up to 100%, and... If I tap, yeah, spacebar, that should mean we activate phase one of process. So, activate. Okay, we're doing a countdown. Screw that, just make it go. And... Okay, we may have run into those pesky laws of physics I was talking about. Okay, no, hang on. I figured it out. The problem was, phase one was both... Push the button that makes the ship go, and also detach the engine. So we detach the engine before we actually set off, leading to... Right, okay. If this moves into... No, you stay in uh, phase one, then phase two. Right, now the ship will go, probably. Okay, Bill, do not let me down again. Thrusters are up to 100%, and go. Skip the bloody countdown. Okay! We have made it off the launch pad. We are making progress here. So we are burning a fuel right there. You can see it going down. And as soon as it actually does go down, we press go and the next phase continues. So when I press go, yeah, the like booster should fall off, which should shift a huge amount of weight. Meaning we are now going up into the sky beautifully. And we're going to keep going up because of momentum. 
The point is, uh, we have made it into sort of maybe space. It's kind of unclear. But I think we're in space. This, to me, feels uh, like space. Okay? I can see stars, uh, despite it being the day. Therefore, space. And yes, we're definitely going to slow down, because even if we are in space, the Earth's gravity is going to pull us back in. So, uh, yeah, we're now approaching uh, 100,000 meters. It says uh, M. Right there, are we going to reach 100,000? Oh, we're definitely, we're slowing down, but we're going to make it. We're going to make it a hundred kilometers in space. Right, Bill, pop outside. You just cling onto your thing right there. You are presumably, yes, the highest altitude Kerbal that has ever existed. Don't let go, though. Like, seriously, do not let go. Okay, we've definitely peaked and we're now descending again. But I do not want to open the parachute just yet, because... If I do, there's no, like, air to go in it, so... Actually, that is true. What happens if you just, like, release a parachute up in space? Does it not, like, slow you down at all? Because... Uh, no, I guess it wouldn't. Because uh, there's no air resistance. And logically, it also wouldn't, like, fill up and be parachute-shaped. So, okay, do not release the parachute until uh, we're pretty sure we're back in the atmosphere. Release parachutes! And... Zoom out a bit. Okay, that's not... It's not doing much right now. Maybe because there's no air. Possibly there needs to be more more air. We're still falling at like a pretty high rate, to be honest. Um, Really hoping this was the right parachute for the job because... I'm increasingly concerned you're supposed to attach more than one parachute. Because uh, we do seem to be falling at a um pretty high rate. I'm going to try and give it a wiggle. See if we can like fix that. Oh! I don't know whether that was just altitude or an automated system or whether it was the wiggling that did it. So in future, we're just going to have to wiggle in the event of attempting to land. But the point is, Bill Kerman is going to survive this entire process. And now, oh yeah, now, now he can flipping let go and wander around on this mysterious alien world of... His home world, actually. And is he doing a little dance? Okay, he just did a victory dance because I successfully got him home. So, okay. You know what? I'm going to call this a huge win after the one slight not win where we didn't, like, set up the rocket right. Okay, objective one complete. We've sent somebody into space and we've got them back without them dying. Objective two, setting up an orbit, which... I think I understand, okay? People explained the signs of this to me last time I played uh, the original Kerbal Space Program, which is uh, if you're going really fast because you boosted a rocket, like, round the world, uh, then because you're in space, there's no air resistance, so there's nothing to make you slow down. So you're just going to keep going at that speed uh, forever. But there is a force being applied to you, the force of uh, gravity, Earth's gravity. So... Uh, while you're zooming along, gravity's pulling you slowly towards the world to steady rates. So you're zooming, but gravity pulls you in, but you're still zooming and gravity's pulling you in, and you're still zooming and gravity's pulling you in. So you're constantly falling, but you're constantly missing the world too. That's all I need to do. Just go fast enough in the right direction that I'm going round and round and round the world and constantly missing it. And once I've done that, I don't need engines anymore. So I don't actually need that much power. Like, this is the bit I struggle to get my head around. Like, in space, you're not really using that much boost power for anything. You need a fair bit of boost power to, like, get into space. Once you're actually in space, you need the tiniest engine and you can do huge amounts with it. Because that engine isn't actually getting you anywhere. It's just slightly changing your trajectory and gravity's doing the actual work. I think, anyway. So now what I need is, yes, like two rockets on top of each other, where the bottom one, we can stick with what we've got, that's loads of fuel, loads of power, that gets me out into space. Brilliant. But once we're in space, I just need a, a little bit of fuel to plug onto the bottom, then a very small thruster just to do a tiny adjustments so I can like get into the orbits. Here we go, this tiny old thing. The thrust is really low, but presumably... The fuel efficiency is really high. Then we just plug you onto you. We just, you know, put some plating around the outside. And now I just need to stage the damn thing correctly. 
Step one, lower booster fires. That's my launch. Stage two, once that's done, we release this thing and get rid of the heavy engines, meaning, yeah, the ship's gonna go a lot further on momentum alone. Stage three, we activate the secondary booster, which should then be, yes, available because we've got rid of everything else. Once that's done, stage four, we get rid of that. We only do that once we're in orbit, leaving us only with, yes, the command module itself and parachutes. Okay, engineer's report says it's gonna take off, but it's gonna take off, yes, yeah, slower than my last ship. Why? Because I'm carrying extra weight. This is fine. We're gonna take off, and then after we take off, we're going to slowly start turning. Because, yes, we don't want to go straight up. Ultimately, we want to get out of the atmosphere, and then be, like, turning a bit. There's, like, a specific angle, but I can't remember what it is. So we're just gonna, like, you know ease into it a bit at first, then up to like, you know, 45 degrees later or something. Okay, engines to maximum, prepare to go, skip the bloody countdown, just make it take off and just very slightly make it go a little bit at an angle because we're gonna run out of, uh, oh, we're running out of juice pretty fast actually. Okay, possibly, right, jetson that right now. Keep this thing going up in the world. Uh, and now, probably the best thing to do would be go over to map mode. Okay, just... Okay, right now we are set to... Okay, hang on. I understand this. That is the apoapsis. Yes, which is the opposite of the possibly periapsis. I can't remember. That basically means yes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to this point... Then come back down, and the game's saying explode. We're not going to explode. I've got a parachute special, right? We practiced this. But it's not good enough. So what I need to do now is provide additional thrust. And right now I am actually facing, yes, prograde. So if what I do now is I activate my secondary thrusters, uh, go. We should now be burning. Small amount of fuel, and now if I increase thrust, what should happen is, uh, there we go. Now we're making it further and further and further away. The Apo thingy is extending away from me. And if I've brought enough fuel with me, then what's going to happen is that this will be able to loop all the way around the world. And if I've not brought enough fuel with me... Then we're just going to be landing, yes, much further away than I was expecting or so. Okay. Ease off the fuel for now. Because we're going... We're going very much up and... Okay. I'm going to be honest. What we just did there was I just pressed spacebar. Because I wanted to pause time. And spacebar in this game doesn't pause time. Okay. It activates the next stage of the rockets. So what's just happened is we now definitely cannot achieve orbits. Okay, slightly more fuel, slightly more thrust. Put it all together, if you'd be so kind. And the engineer says, that's fine. That's definitely going into space. Brilliant, no problems. Let's get you back out. And this time, it's going to go better. And what I'm not going to do is press spacebar and accidentally, you know, jettison the fuel before we were supposed to do that. And John, you have not staged this rocket even remotely correctly. But it's fine because I spotted it before we went to space. So just burn that. Jettison. And now, are you guys already on or not? Not yet. So I can click go. So these guys can activate if I want them to. But at a very low rate. So okay. That's fine. Check the map. And right now, zoom in a little bit. Okay. We're going up. That's good. I want to be going a little bit more of an angle. And as long as we are going at that angle and are holding about here on the globe. Increase thrust. Not a huge amount, just a bit. As long as we're about... Is that green thing good? That green thing looks good to me. So we're burning fuel. But we're burning it slowly and efficiently. And we should have uh, plenty more of it. And I am not going to press spacebar. I think 
this is going well. We are holding at prograde, which means at forwards versus retrograde backwards. Fuel is starting to run a bit on the low side, but as we get further and further out into space, sooner or later, come on. Come on, little ship. I believe in you. I flipping believe in you. Just, okay. Reduce fuel consumption. We need to save the fuel. We're still going further and further and further out here. We just need to get enough. Oh, bloody hell, we're so close. We're so close to some form of orbit. We didn't bring enough fuel or possibly enough boosters. Okay, the basic principle is sound. We just need to bring more power. What I was saying earlier about how you don't need much boost power in space because the magical forces of gravity and physics, they do the work. That was wrong. It turns out you need tons of boost power too. Okay, I'm going to make this work, though I can't deny I'm slightly concerned about the fact that we haven't actually taken off yet and the rocket is now, yes, it, it's just wobbling. Okay, yeah, didn't make it off the, uh, the landing pad at that point. That's fine. All we need to do is press the go button as soon as it's actually, you know, on the launch pad. Because turns out this new design with a triple stack of rockets to give me even more power is not actually, um, that stable in many ways. Okay, quickly, launch it, launch it before it falls over. So, okay, just start slowly heading in the right direction it is. Okay, this thing is not stable. This ship is not stable. This ship is not stable at all. Uh, but this is, this is fine. This is, okay, we're sort of, we're definitely rotating. Like, which I don't think we're supposed to be doing. We're carrying a lot of weight here. But I'm sure it's all going to work out fine in the, uh, in the end. We're almost ready to shed a lot of that weight, though. That will be much better when we can shed, like, some of the weight. So, go. And then light the next. Oh, hang on. Sorry, you need some, uh, you need some, uh, energy right there. Also, okay, seriously, we're sort of... We're drifting. No, 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 it's fine. It's, it's, okay, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's, we're, we're doing a bit of a flip here. Okay, just, just ride it through. Best thing we can do now is just, yeah, just, just go, go straight through one flip. And then we'll try and stabilize, like, before the next one. Okay, it's all gonna be, it's all gonna be, oh, blimey, this thing is. Wait, hang on. Okay, this launch has gone wrong in, like, various ways. But, like, on the other hand... Okay, this engine... I picked this engine at random. I can't help but notice it's burning fuel, like, ridiculously efficiently. I may have just accidentally discovered that the problem was I was just using the wrong engine this entire time. So there we go. Straight up. We've already made it to 50-odd meters right. So this is going to be a very slow chunker. It's not going to actually get us off the ground particularly well, but if I could just get, okay, a tiny bit of help just to get us, like, you know, up the first kilometer or whatever, then let this old girl take over pretty much immediately afterwards, because, okay, it's burnt a lot of fuel just to get to the clouds, and clouds are not that high, like, in the context of the moon, where we want to go. Okay, new plan, slight extension, a very small fuel tank here just gets us off the launch pad, then that beautiful, sexy, stable beast that just lasts forever, that's what we're gonna go to, second, then finally, yes, the older the top, so thrust weight is looking just fine, okay, this staging is all correct, I assume, so just launch you straight up, do not worry about anything else, the fuel is gonna run out in like, no time whatsoever. That's fine. That's its job. Get rid of you. Then turn you on. So all we need to do was get you off the launch pad. This is now, yes, the main thruster with a giant pile of fuel. And now we've not had to waste, like, a third of that fuel just getting up to the clouds. You are going to last a lot flipping longer. And for now, we're just going gently up, because yes, this is a very slow ascent, this is a heavy rocket, so we don't need to worry too much about prograde yet, we can start very, 
very slightly going in this direction. But yeah, we've just got so much time and so much fuel, we don't need to worry about it. Okay, this is it. This is the moment. We are going to do it. So, still three into... Honestly, we might be... We might be ready to do this. Okay, just start moving around to radial in. Because right now, yeah, the line is... It's extending a bit too far out into space, which is not what I need to. And as soon as we achieve an orbit, just jettison. Okay, just jettison right now. Okay, this is it. This is it. This is the moment. This is the moment right here. So as soon as we've got the orbit, in fact, yep. Activate. Tiny bit of fuel. Just the littlest bit. And I think we've got it. I think we've already flipping got it. And now, yep. Just turn off the engines. It's an orbit. I mean, it's an orbit that's somewhat dangerously close to Earth. I'll admit. But the game is saying it's an orbit. So, okay. We are not currently burning fuel. If I start speeding up time at this point, then presumably... So, yeah, we're just going to go round this orbit. And there's the moon over there. And we're just going to go round and around and around. And gravity and physics are... Okay, it's fine. We didn't crash. We're just dangerously close. That's all. And there she is. Just rotating around the world. No engines on whatsoever. Life is flipping good. Now, question the next. How do we get to the moon? Because the moon is... Yes, we can speed up a tiny bit, but... Not that much, because I'm so bloody close to Kerbal. The moon is rotating. I think it's going this way. So what I need to do is, uh, yes, burn fuel in the radial out position. When I've turned around to face that. So yeah, go around to radial out, which is blue. Yep, there we go. So go to that, and then if I was to burn fuel while in this position, then what would happen would be, yes, my orbit would extend outwards slowly. As long as I've still got an orbit with Earth, then that's acceptable. The problem is, I probably have nowhere near enough fuel to make it to the moon. But bare minimum, just get to here. See if we can stabilize on... Yeah, stabilize right about there. Now, once we've stabilised there, just give me the tiniest, tiniest bit of approaching... Hang on. Approaching something. This is this is fine. Just zoom in a bit. We should presumably... Oh, now we're... Okay, now we're about to crash. Okay, maybe turn more towards prograde. If I just boost prograde, that should extend the orbit outwards. Right? The orbit seems to be... Okay, this this isn't doing entirely... This isn't doing entirely what I thought it was going to do, to be honest. Like, I, I thought we were onto a good thing here. Like, that's prograde. Are we definitely... Hang on, that's... No, that's... That's... I think that's the... Okay. Well, you shouldn't mark them with the same colour. If you're going to mark prograde and retrograde with the same colour, you're going to see I'm going to get bloody confused. Okay, I've gone away, had a cup of tea, had a think. So we've got a new three-stage rocket just slightly adjusted. So, uh, bottom stage, completely inelegant, nothing but a giant punch of power. That's fine, it's not supposed to do anything, aside from uh, get me off the launch pad uh, and get me into high atmosphere. Does not need to be elegant. Stage two stays completely as it is because it was already bloody perfect. And stage three, assuming stage two gets us into a nice orbit, that's the one that gets us to the moon. So, a bit more fuel and landing gear so we can land on the moon. Okay, thrust to weight is looking fine. We take off. We then jettison all the stuff down there. We move into orbit with sector 2. Once we're in orbit, we jettison that. And then we plan the maneuver to the moon. It's going to be fine, probably. Aside from the fact, okay, the rocket is sort of rocky again, so wait for it to be sort of, uh, yes, vaguely upright, and then... Okay, skip the countdown, we just need to go... Oh, bloody hell. Okay. So, I mean, we're going up. 
honestly, that's kind of all I wanted. Uh, that's fine. Very slowly in many ways. But again, we knew that was going to be a thing. So just keep on keeping on. That's fine. 100% thrust. We just want to be going up. I mean, we're going to be like a good 5,000 before we even get past the first thrusters, which... I mean, I'm going to call that a huge win. That is a big step forward over where we've been before. So, just wait for all of this to go horribly wrong. And as soon as you guys are all lovely... So, that's now broken. Have you now fired? You have not... Oh, I need to actually activate you. Sorry, sorry. No, no, it's fine. It's fine and now, okay, now things are starting to go, oh, oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, okay. Just need to stabilize uh, slightly, just need to stabilize a little bit. This is fine, this is okay, this is not entirely what we wanted to happen, but like, it's, it's gonna work out in the end. Just rotate the thing so it's back to where it should be, and we're going in like, Sort of the right direction. Give or take. Just stabilize, 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 stabilize. Okay, we, we've definitely the whole the whole fact we were spinning a second to go thing has um thrown us off a little bit. I'll admit, but okay, just again, just rotate to compensate. This is looking better than it should do for the fact we were just spinning a second to go. Okay, hang on, hang the cock on. Pause for a second. Let's just go out to the, um, yes, the wider plan here. Because I've now burnt half my fuel in what was supposed to be my get into orbit rockets. So that's, that's not, it's not great in many ways. Uh, how about we just, yeah, ease down the fuel consumption and just start moving in the direction of, okay, we're already in prograde. We've managed to recover from the fact the rocket was doing some spinning. So now we simply activate... Yes, the whole um, orbit thing. I was about to say circuit, but no, orbit. That's the word I'm looking for. So, okay. If I can maneuver us between, yeah, uh, prograde and normal, going towards radial in at some point, that should be good enough. So, yeah, just move us in that direction. That's good. The rocket is still spinning by the way. Rocket's definitely still spinning. Not much I can do about that. Every time I try and compensate, it just starts spinning the other bloody way. Okay, the spinning seems to have mostly stabilized. We are moving towards an orbit, which is, you know, good. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Fuel is running out, but once you kind of get clear of, yeah, the planet, at that point it's not too difficult to just, you know, complete the orbit. That's that's okay. So we might just be able to get into the situation we want to be in already, which would be great. And when we do, we need to be ready to just cut the fuel immediately. I mean, as soon as we're just like clear of the other side of the planet, I mean, honestly, this is going much better than it has got any bloody right to. So, okay, just eyes on the little ball too. Eyes on the little ball too. And okay. We've got an orbit. Cut power to engines. We are now circling the planet. Question does occur, is it like a good stable orbit that's like in line with... I mean, okay, it's like, I was about to say like, you know, horizontal, but that doesn't probably mean anything in the context of like, you know, space travel. The point is, we're not at a completely wacky angle because of that whole situation with, um, yes, the rocket doing some flips when it took off. So, okay, the rocket is now in a stable orbit and we've got a tiny bit of fuel to do some slight adjustments if we want to. So, time to start thinking about, yes the moon. How do we make it to the moon? And do we have enough fuel to actually, you know, make it there and whatnot? So, okay. It's time to plot a maneuver. So, what I'm doing now is, yes, trying to plan a theoretical maneuver that I might wish to do. If I was to go really big on the whole... Oh, oh, that was, that was too much. Okay. A little bit, little bit less than that. A little bit more retrograde, please. Uh, turns out I'm kind of going. There we go. 
Calm it down a little bit. Calm it down. Okay, now that looks good. That looks good right there. So, this is a maneuver that, by the looksy of it, given the moon is now sort of like, you know, grown a pair of gravity boobs, would presumably bring me into lunar-like gravitational range. That's worth having a think about. So, yes, in approximately 30 minutes, though I could just uh, time warp getting to that, then all I need to do is a, a particular burn, i.e. whack the thrusters uh, up to 100%, use uh, SRS controls, uh, just put them into maneuver mode, and the ship will be pointing in the right direction. That gets me into moon range somewhere over here. I enter moon gravity, and then, oh, then I leave moon gravity over here. That would suggest that, yes, maybe the moon would pass me by before I can really do anything about it, because uh, the moon is... Is the moon travelling faster than my ship? I mean, I feel like celestial bodies probably are moving faster than me. Yes. This, I think, looks really, really good. So, yes, we enter moon effect here. We leave it here. It would appear we pretty much pass by the moon. And uh, even if I can't, you know, get into moon orbit or morbid, if you will, it doesn't matter because I'm going to be left in, yes, a very wide orbit that's going to leave me passing by where the moon is passing by on a routine basis and oxygen isn't a thing in this game so as a result of that because it's a stable orbit I could just keep going around and around and around forever until eventually I happen to be you know passed by the moon in a convenient spot that or I collide with the moon that or the gravity of the moon at some point throws me into space and I get lost forever one of those place bets now Okay, I am admittedly suddenly a bit concerned that possibly I haven't, like, you know, plugged the right control thing onto my ship because I definitely feel like this panel should be, like, more active right now than it is. And I'm worried that means I am not going to have the, yeah, ship's computer automatically calculating trajectory for me because it's up to me to turn the burn on and then stop the burn at the point when computer says uh, stop burning, though I'm a little bit concerned that potentially fuel's gonna run out before I actually- oh bloody hell. Should I just jettison, yes, the remaining things that I've got, and then use the fresh fuel to get to the moon? I mean, that's gonna be more fuel than it looks like. This engine is ridiculously efficient, it's going to be fine. And if it's not, we're going to have to... Oh, bloody hell. We're just going to have to figure it out en route. It's going to be A-OK. -okay. Admittedly, the ship is still... The ship's still very spinning. Like, I, I cannot stop the ship from spinning. I mean, the problem is partially, yes, I've now got no ability to correct at all. Can I rotate? Yes, I do have the ability to make the ship spin one way or another. That I can do. But with literally no... OK, I need to turn the engines on. Like, the tiniest amount, just so I've got some thrust in an attempt to stabilize the ship as far as possible on, yes, prograde. Like, literally, 3% will do it. That's, that's all I need, just to give me enough to get me facing towards... No, that's, that's the wrong green thing. I want the other one, I think. Oh, I've just figured out I can turn on the SAS and thus make the ship... Oh. Okay, well that's much easier. Sorry, I just forgot to push the SAS button, which I didn't realise was a thing that I was supposed to be pushing. But as a result of that, I can just... Okay, well that makes life much easier. We are preparing for burn in T-15 seconds. The problem is it does not tell you how long the burn needs to be before it actually begins. So I don't know whether there's a any realistic chance I've got enough fuel to complete this burn. So two, one, pause the game. So now, whack up the engines to 100%. The SAS is, yes, taking care of the maneuvers. So now, all I should need to do is just stand back and let everything take care of itself. It says this is going to be 
Well, it says it's going to be, oh, hang on. Required Delta U. Four, three, two, one. Oh, this is... Okay. It says stop burn, but oh, I think I've confused it by the fact I didn't have enough fuel to complete the burn. I think it was telling me to basically, yes, burn as much fuel as I possessed, which isn't enough, but I've got secondary engines, so I really hope they're as good, because otherwise problems. Okay, so now, as soon as these are empty, go and activate. Right, so now we've got new engines. The problem is, I think changing over engines just cancelled out my manoeuvre. So I now no longer have... Oh, I've now no longer got... Okay. <laughs> okay, so we're now just fingering the airing the moon. That's, that's what we're doing right now. I mean, we were going in the right direction. So it's going to be... Okay, wait, wait, wait. I mean, oh! I think this engine might actually be significantly stronger than the last engine. So, okay. The ship is now going to make its way over to where the moon is. And the moon is going to, well, by the looks of it, pretty much I'm going to pass by the moon. This kind of feels like a really, really good intercept angle to my mind. So, okay, for the time being, just to speed up time a bit, the moon is on the move up to, uh, yep, yeah, 50. I'm going to sort of, yes, just go vaguely nearby the moon. We're going to, yeah, insert that point about here. So, okay, just slow it all down. Slow it all down. As soon as we're inside the moon's gravitational field, uh, I need to start trying to calculate if there's, like, any route, like a new manoeuvre that could get me into moon space. Because, oh, uh, we are going to barely be inside the moon's gravitational field. But, like, we are inside it. Okay? That's, that's good. Which suggests to me, okay, it's time to stop. Bob Kerman is very excited right now. Oh, there she is. There's the moon. Okay. At normal speed, we could just enjoy the moon floating around. So I'm now inside the moon's, yes, gravity I won't say the word well. I think that might be a sci-fi word. I'm not sure. And yes, right now the moon is passing me by. However, if I was to... Think about this here. If I was to fire retrograde now, then that would make my blue line curve inwards. Fire retrograde. I'd like you to move into that position. We're going to be incredibly slow for the time being. Because right now, me and the moon are both moving very slowly in normal time. Retrograde. Give it a tiny, tiny bit of power. It's making the line move in. But is it going to be... Oh, oh. Okay, everything's going... Okay. I mean, this is kind of working. And also, occasionally I might be planning to crash into the moon. I mean, this is this is looking good. Oh, bloody hell! And just wait. Okay, now, now we've got other problems, which is... Okay, we're going to be orbiting the moon from top to bottom. That just doesn't feel right. Like, if you're trying to land on a moon that's going around horizontally... I should also be going round horizontally, but I guess this is my fault for setting the ship to normal, which unfortunately has created a very abnormal orbit, like I say as a complete rocket expert. Okay, just keep going. No, John. John, 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 John. Wait until you're at the periapsis, or whatever that thing is. Yes, the periapsis. Once you're on the periapsis, then, slow down like crazy. Retrograde like nuts. Okay, that's going to be it. This is the solution. We wait till we get right to the periapsis. Then, we slow it down. I'm just not in the right position right now. If I slow down on the periapsis, then the circle will close. Okay, approaching a periapsis. I need you to, yes, face a retrograde and give me... 
a tiny bit of juice. And... Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, that's good. I need to, yeah, get a bit closer yet. Once again, just move time along. Wait till I'm properly on the periapsis if need be. Okay, good. That's a good spot. Yep, that's lovely. Now, give me the thrust right there. Give me a tiny bit of thrust. And now we just close her in. Make it a nice, tight orbit. And, holy flip, I've done it. Stable moon orbit. Okay, we are doing better than I did with Kerbal 1. Stop it there. Okay. I am now going round the moon. Speed it up and wait till I'm properly on periapsis. Then what we'll do is we'll, yeah, we'll shore up the orbit a tiny bit more at that point. And then we will be in an extremely close orbit to the moon. I don't know whether that's good or not, but it feels like good to me. It's like doing a trick shot with a spaceship. So, okay. Wait. Right on the periapsis. Now, actually, wait till I'm just past the periapsis, actually. Like, I'm just kind of guessing that's what I'm supposed to do. Now, just give me, yeah, maybe 7% power. Fuel remaining in the lander craft is about half, give or take. But now, now I'm firing retrograde. Yeah, we're just going to close the orbit in around the moon, so no matter where I am, I am nice and flipping close. And in just a second, wait, 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 as soon as we are lovely and close, cut the power. Okay. So now, I'm cycling the moon. Oh, this is, this is rather exciting and special, isn't it? Now, the question does at this point occur, how the cock do I get onto said moon? Okay, just speed up time for a second till I'm like, you know, properly on the light side of the moon. So, okay. What I think I need to do is I need to slow down. I'm orbiting at 500 meters a second. But like, how fast is that really? Okay, just went and checked and it's over a thousand miles an hour. So okay, that is that is actually pretty fast, Jess. Yeah, so I was kind of hoping that would actually be quite slow. But it turns out, no, it, it, it's not. It's, it's extremely cocking fast. So okay, what I need to do if I want to land is I need to slow down. Fire retrograde and see what that does to my speed. Keeping a closer eye on altitude. And that is slowing me down. And I know I'm going to crash, but that's fine. Because I feel like I'm going to get down to zero before... Yeah, this number I mean. The speed, that's going to hit zero before this thing hit zero. Speaking of which, go up to map. Presumably this means... Yep, here we go. Crash is coming in. Supposedly quite fast, actually. Um... Okay. Supposedly... Well, you say we're going to crash really soon... But I can't help but notice I'm still, like, a long way away from, like, you know, the surface. Which is... Okay. Interesting. And stop. Tiny bit more. Just get me down to zero. I assume there's, like, minus numbers where I'm going backwards. So I just need to get down to precisely zero. Zero orbit speed. So I'm already doing better than last time. Because now... Here we go. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, we're traveling at... We've got a little bit of speed. It's the tiniest bit of speed. Now I would like you to... The ship is facing up. And presumably... Go to map. Now the ship is simply, yeah, drifting downwards. It's just going straight in. Which... Just keep zooming out. Where's the... I'm sure there should be a moon around here somewhere. Okay, space is bigger than I'm giving it credit. We are now drifting downwards. But we're doing it. Yes, we're orbiting downwards at a speed of... Okay, I admit, I kind of... Oh, dear. I think what I've just realized is... um, The landing stuff is kind of 
on the wrong thing. Because... Okay, John. Let's be honest. I think we all know this was likely to be a one-way trip. I mean, I thought one-way trip in the sense of uh, we were going to comically explode into the moon again. But it's actually just about possible we might be able to land on the moon. Okay. I don't want to give up my thrusters yet. But presumably at this point... We are going down. Speed up time a lot here. There we go. Now we're going down. Just be aware that, yes, the clock takes a second to catch up with whatever button you're pushing. We are definitely going down. I cannot jettison the engine yet. Because the gravity, even though it appears to be, yes, much lower than Earth, is pulling me down. So I need some counter thrust so that just before we get down to the bottom... At that point, I could jettison the engine. There's a possibility I will then crash into the engine that I'm going to jettison. So, okay. Speed this up a little bit. It's all going to be fine. Everything's okay. How big is... Okay, just again, zoom in. Space! So much bigger than I'm giving it credit for. This is not a video game size moon, okay? Really cocking big moon. It's time to slow our... Uh-oh. Uh-oh, yep. There we go. Just maybe a bit more power, actually. There we go. Want to be coming down nice and slow, actually. Lovely. All right, nice and slow. Just save a big boost for when we're almost down on the ground. Okay? When we're, like, 100 meters up, we reduce at velocity to zero... Jettison the rockets, and I'm going to be honest, I'm not 100% sure how we, we turn these on. Does anyone know how we, like, activate them? Because I, I actually don't. Um, They're not in the staging, which is mildly concerning, actually. Hang about. There's gear. Oh, gear! Okay, I found the gear button. We should probably... Okay. Put them away for now. Oh, I think we're almost here. I think we're almost here. I think we're almost here. Okay. In which case, jettison the rocket. And at this point, activate the gear. Activate the gear. Activate the... I have decided that this counts as an absolute, complete, total victory against the moon. Okay, I landed on the moon. It was not my fault that the moon was in fact fictitious. Okay, I'm not having this. Okay, I'm not being robbed. I've reloaded the most recent uh, autosave. And now I've just slightly adjusted where we're landing. In case that one bit of the moon for some reason was just broken. But that has burnt even more fuel. So... Okay, just save the fuel here. Save the fuel. We've got to slow ourselves down just before landing. It's all going to be fine. Just keep an eye out for shadow, if at all possible. Okay, we're still... We're still moving a little bit. And we're definitely approaching... Okay, yep, down towards zero, please. Down towards zero. There we go. Oh, we are definitely moving. The question is, am I moving too fast for the lander to, you know, land? And I'm worried the answer might well be yes, but bare minimum. We could slow this down a tiny amount. Just the tiniest, tiniest amount. There we go. Look out for the shadow. As soon as we start seeing the shadow, then we want to slow it down for the final time. Oh, I see it. I see it. I see it. I would definitely still... Okay, we're still going a little bit too fast. We're still going a little bit too fast here. That's okay. Give me a tiny bit of fuel. Go to... Uh, and... Oh! Turn that fuel off. Bloody hell. Okay, just... Tiniest bit that slows me down here. That should slow me down. Now back to up. Oh, this is my last chance. This is it. This is the last chance I've got of landing this thing. But I will say... I think this is... Yeah, this is pretty good. We're going a lot slower... Cut it off. 
just gently drift in. This is it. This is the moment I see the shadow. Last drags to slow her down. Slow her down. We're not even looking to... Yeah. Good. This has got to be it. We are basically out of fuel at this point. Slow it. Shadow's moving in. Shadow's moving in. One last tiny bit of fuel. Go. Activate the landing gear. Get it all out. Add. Holy flip. We've done it. We've actually cocking done it. Okay, Bob. Bob, Bob, Bob. You can get out now. It's fine. I, I don't care. I don't care about... We can't moonwalk due to an obstacle. What's the obstacle? Is it the cocking moon? The obstacles that I put the lander over the door, isn't it? We just made it to the moon. And I can't go on a moonwalk. Or plant my flag in the moon. Because when I was attaching the landing struts to the lander... I didn't check whether I was literally sealing the door shut. Meaning... Okay, we already knew that Bob couldn't make it back to Earth. But um, apparently on top of not being able to make it back to Earth... Bob also is unable to walk on the moon. He has been sealed inside this tin can on the moon forever. And as much as I wish it was possible, there's no way to jettison the leg. Bloody hell, this is somehow actually worse than just at smearing a Kerbal across three miles of moon. So, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Kerbal Space Program 2 had just entered early access and... Uh, okay, got to address the elephant in the room. Yes, you can tell it's early access because um, I tried to land on the moon and I couldn't land on the moon because the moon apparently doesn't have collision detection on some parts of it and... um. I feel like landing on the moon is kind of like the one thing this game's got to get right. And it didn't go right. So, okay, might need a bit of spit and polish just yet. But I will say, overall, bloody hell. I mean, it's just a lovely, wonderful experience that just captures the sense of marvel and magic of space travel. It just gets it right in that regard. And you've got to admit, I've done better today than last time. Okay, I am a better rocket scientist now than I was some years ago. I have successfully got a living person onto the moon with no way back or outside. In fact, basically this is just moon torture. But still, living person on the moon, you cannot argue with the results. I will be keeping my eye on this one. Obviously, yes. I think it needs a little bit of polish just yet. Might wait for them to release a few patches. But when it's a bit more, you know, stable, the Kerbal livestream we did a few years back, that was so bloody fun. This will return in some capacity, but uh, yes, as I say, might just let them polish up a bit first. But once that's done, oh blimey, it's going to be magnificent. Hopefully, you're looking forward to that. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been the delightful Kerbal Space Program 2. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Jebediah Kerman has not exploded. Oh, oh shit. What did that happen? Five, four... Three. Oh, I forgot to turn the thrust on. Five, four. Is everything else? How is everything? Up to that point, that was going better than anyone expected.